Good evening. Welcome to a Level Up Thursday. Thank you for tuning in wherever you are around the world. And I would like to bless you and welcome you. My name is Axel Gossar and I am the overseer of Level Up. And today we'll be sharing a word that is really close to my heart. As I was trying to prepare today's message, God really stopped me in steps and he said, Axel, we're going to address something that my people, my disciples and the people that I love sometimes struggle with. And as you could have imagined, it is righteousness. How to stay holy, how to stay righteous and how to stay pleasing God. And I had to really backtrack and remember that at some point in my life, I really wondered how that was even possible. For me, it was something that was quite hard. It was something that I thought could have never achieved, could have never been achieved. It was something that was so that felt so distant. And so today, I want to be able to help you to break down that myth on it is really hard to stay righteous. And I'm going to give you something that I wish someone gave me when I was on my walk with Christ, when I was starting my walk with Christ. And that is five steps to stay righteous, to walk in righteousness. Now, starting with this, we need to define what righteousness is. So righteousness is actually the definition of being righteous. It is the right standing by God. It is walking in accordance to God's will. What we see it quite a lot is actually when Moses received the law from God. Okay, Someone that didn't follow the law was unrighteous. And the person that was following the law was deemed as righteous. And so you could see that in some passages in the Bible, he says that the, the sin of man hid away the first of God from them. And so the law was to help the people of Israel, which did not receive the Holy Spirit yet, how to walk in accordance to God's will, which is how to be righteous, right standing by God. And I know for us sometimes that we might be uh, teenagers, adults, or even elderly people, we tend to find staying righteous really difficult. And it is something that makes us feel distant from God. I know for me at some point, I felt that every time I tried to get closer to God and so be righteous, I was taking 20 steps back. And I never knew how to address it. And so, to, and so today, what I want to give you, I want to give you the simple truth and the simple secrets that Jesus shared with his disciples when he left. It is something that personally changed my life. And I believe that it will change your life too. So if it's not too late for you, I would like you to grab a pen and a piece of paper and start to write those down. And so the first step on how to walk in righteousness is to completely surrender and devote our life to God. I know it seems really futile and it seems really simple, but one of the biggest mistakes that we make once we get into the willing of being close to God is to try to do it on our own. And so one key thing that we need to realize is the fact that we need to give our life to Jesus Christ and completely surrender to God and say, God, I've not been able to sustain myself thus long. And so I need you. It is leaving everything that we can hold in our hands and everything that we can hold in control and say, you know what, God, I've not been good enough to keep that together. So help me. And personally, it's the first step that changed my life. I was a Christian. I was brought up uh, somehow a Christian by my wonderful mother that I love dearly. And I wasn't quite religious. But as I started becoming a little bit more acquainted to the word of God, I thought that I can do this. You know, it's really simple. I need to put barriers together and I need to make sure that I follow this uh, role and don't get myself in this kind of situation and positions. But what I forgot is the fact that the reason God gave the Holy Spirit for Jesus Christ is because he understood that humans couldn't do it on their own. And so for us to believe that we can do it on, on our own without surrendering and completely devoting our life to God completely backtracks the point of why the Holy Spirit was sent in the first place. And the scripture really that perfectly explains this is Galatians 2 verse 20 which said I have been crucified with Christ that is in him I have shared his crucifixion it is no longer I who live 
but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body I live by faith, by daring to, relying on and completely trusting in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. And this is beautiful because it is Paul talking about how he gave his life to Jesus Christ. And so for that point on, he, did, he wasn't the one struggling anymore because he relied on God completely. He adhered to his truth. He trusted the peace of God, which is the Holy Spirit. He trusted Jesus Christ that lived in him in order to make good out of his life. And this is where we should be heading. So now, carrying on to step number two. As you're writing it down, it is recognizing the sinful nature as the old man and not the new man. Now, one key thing that sometimes we get wrong is the fact that we still believe, having accepted Jesus Christ, that we are still sinners. And the truth is that once we have accepted Jesus Christ, we are normal sinners. Because he cut us away from the sinful nature that we had before. And so we should live our life as free in mind, free in body, and free in spirit. And this is something that we all have to learn because we see ourselves making mistakes and so we still believe that we haven't changed. But we need to understand the change that Jesus Christ brought into our life once we accepted him. And if we haven't accepted him yet, and this is you watching this video, I would like to welcome you into accepting Jesus Christ into your heart. Because what happens is something that could have never happened without him devoting his life to us. Is the fact that now God has decided to live in us so that we could step in righteously and not struggle to be acquainted to him. And the scripture is Colossians 2, 11 to 12. It says, In him you were also circumcised with a circumcision not made with hands, but by the spiritual circumcision of Christ in the stripping off of the body of the flesh. And he says, The sinful carnal nature having been buried with him in baptism and raised with him to a new life through your faith in the working of god as displayed when he raised christ from the dead and so the key thing is to understand that we are not sinners anymore and so to walk righteously we need to understand that we are free because a slave can never act free if he's still bound in his mind and for us it is the same it is to believe our belief to believe what God has done to us, but most importantly to the fact that we are dead to sin. It means that it no longer remains in our body and we no longer have to partake in it. Step number three, which is one of the most important steps, is walking by the Holy Spirit and doing this by focusing on Him every single moment. Now, what happens is that at times when we get tempted to do something which is not righteous, our mind diverts into thinking and believing something that is a lie. As I said to you earlier on, we are not of a sinful nature anymore, so sin doesn't belong to us and we are not controlled or pushed to sin by anything within us. And so the only thing that causes us to continue sinning without sin abiding in us is the fact that we think about sin. And so today, what I would like you to really understand is the fact that as we renew our mind, as we walk with the Holy Spirit, as we focus on Him, we get to believe and to see holy things in our lives. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is this scripture says. And that is exactly the same thing. What we focus on is what we end up, what will end up resulting in our lives. And the scripture that really blessed me is Galatians 5, 16 to 18, which says, But I say, walk habitually in the Holy Spirit. Seek Him and be responsive to His guidance. And then you will certainly not carry out the desire of the sinful nature, which responds impulsively without regards for God and His precepts. And sim really simply, it is to focus on God, focus on the Holy Spirit. And sometimes I was guilty at some point as well, 
is the fact that we don't focus on the Holy Spirit enough. But now I want to say that communicate with the Holy Spirit. Ask Him, seek His guidance. It is as simple as talking to a friend. And by doing so, we will walk in, we will walk in righteousness. Because our mind is focused on what is righteous. Step number four, which is renewing our mind with new understanding. One of the hardest things when we give our life to Jesus Christ is to believe our new nature. Is to believe the new reality that we live in. Because something that was once a problem isn't a problem anymore overnight. And so our mind needs to play catch up in order to ensure that we stick by that reality. And so when we renew our mind, we make something that was once difficult to understand become reality in our day-to-day living. I know for me, I used to always ask myself, how do I renew my mind? It sounds really difficult. And over, over the years, God revealed to me that renewing our mind is as easy as repeating His word into our mind. It's continuously bringing back to our memory, bringing back to our consciousness, His truth, which is the word of God. For example, for me, I always bring back the fact that I'm in oneness with the Holy Spirit. And no matter if I am in a dinner or I am cooking or I might be walking in the street, it is something that I just bring up into my mind, bring up into my mind. And more I bring up into my mind, more it becomes my reality because I get to think about it all the time and so I get to live by it all the time. And so renewing our mind is the beginning of our change. Why am I saying our change? It's because Jesus changed us inside, but then our output needs to change by believing what is changed inside of us. It is a change into accepting what is the new us and how we live newly. And so the scripture that really blessed me is Ephesians 4, 21 to 24, which it says, If in fact you have really heard him and have been taught by him, just as truth is in Jesus revealed in his life and personified in him, that regarding your previous way of life, you put off your old self, completely discard your former nature, which is being corrupted through deceitful desires, and be continually renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh untarnished mental and spiritual attitude and put on the new self, the the re-originated and renewed nature, created in God's image. And as simple as it is, is as we put off the old self, which was in sin of the sinful nature, which is our flesh, before we accepted Jesus Christ, we also need to put on the new man that that we are through the Holy Spirit. And so it's a change of reality that we need to ensure we're doing by renewing our mind daily. And finally, which is something that I really wanted to keep to the end, is to not give up to the lie. Do not give up to the lie that your mind, the world, your surrounded wants you to believe. Do not give up when you feel like you're about to do something which is unrighteous that you have to. Do not believe that there is no way out and so the only way to do so is to partake into what you didn't want to do at first. Because that is a lie. And I would like to tell you as you are watching that you can do it. And you are not bound to any desires that is unlawful or that is against the will of God. You are not bound to do anything because you are free from all things. And so do not believe in that lie. Do not let your mind and you tracking back into your past, believing that you cannot overcome the test that you're currently facing. No matter what it faces, no matter what is is making you, how can I say that? What is, what is being complicated for you to overcome? I want you to know and realize that today, you have all the tools to overcome it. But most importantly, you already overcome it. And now you just need to walk in the fact that you're already victorious. Because if sin is dead, it will never be able to live inside of you. And by following the four steps that I shared just beforehand, I truly believe that you will be able to stand strong. Just like Jesus did in Luke 
22, 40 to 43, which says, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup of divine wrath from me. Yet, not my will, but always yours be done. And he says, now an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And so Jesus understood that it was a test. And he made sure to not believe the lie that his body was proposing. Because if Jesus got to believe that lie, we would have never been saved. And so he did that sacrifice. He need demonstrated that we can be tested. But we will never lose. For a time that we always rely back on God. So right now, I would like to encourage you, wherever you are, stand strong. Follow those five steps. Because God is already proud of you. And what he wants you to do is to exercise to walk in your new reality. If it is something that you enjoyed, I would like to please like, subscribe and share this message in our channel. It really, really helps us. And I truly believe that we are developing disciples of Jesus Christ around the world. If you ever need to get in touch, please do so through our YouTube channel and our social medias at HOP Level Up and we would love to get in touch. Love you all and speak to you soon.